To make this whole app more useful, we're going to modify edit view so it shows suggested locations nearby to their dropped location. If you think about it, this makes sense. If your dream destination is London, for example, it'd be nice to see some locations nearby you can go and sightsee while you're there. Now, this might sound hard to do, but actually Wikipedia has uh, an API we can query using GPS coordinates and say, hey, what's nearby here? And it'll send us back Wikipedia pages of things near to there, which is great for us suggesting locations to see. Now, Wikipedia's JSON sends back its data in a very precise format. So we've got a little bit of codable work to do to build new structs to match that format. The main result comes back with a simple key called query. That query comes back with a pages dictionary where the key is an integer, which is the unique page ID for Wikipedia, internal to Wikipedia, and the value is all the page data. And inside there, we can read out the coordinates, title, terms, and more. It's very useful data. So we can represent this with three linked structs. So let's make those now. Press Command N, choose a new Swift file. I'll put them all into one file called result.swift. And inside here, our top level result is codable. Codable. And has one value called query, which is a query. And that struct query, it's also codable. It has one value inside, a dictionary of pages, where it's int for keys. That's again, it's Wikipedia's internal identifier. And then page for value. And then we have struct page. Again, codable. This will have a page ID, all lowercase, one word, int. It'll have a title, string, and then have terms. This will be a dictionary of string as keys, an array of strings for value, which may or may not be there. Now, we're going to use this to store data we fetch from Wikipedia, then show it immediately inside our UI. However, we need something to show while that fetch happens. So to keep the user informed, is it fetching? Is it currently loaded? Has it failed or who knows what? This can be a simple text view, just something telling the user what's going on. Now this means conditionally showing one of three different UIs depending on what state our fetch request is currently in. Uh, our data fetch request, that is not core data fetch request. Um, and then we can do this with a simple enum in our edit view. We can say uh, there's an enum here tracking our loading states. The first one will be loading. I am currently fetching data from Wikipedia. Second one, loaded. I have grabbed the data. I now have it. And third one, failed. I didn't get anything back or there's networks down or who knows what. And that covers all three states. Our network fetch can actually be in any given time. And now we're going to add two properties to our edit view. One to represent the loading state. What state are we currently in? and then one to store an array of all the Wikipedia pages we just fetched from the API. So add these two now. At state, private var, loading state, equals loading state dot loading. That's our default state. We're currently loading the data. And then at state, private var, pages is an array of page. Now, if you remember, the API we just designed will store a result, inside there a query, inside there, a dictionary of pages. In practice, we don't actually care about the query or the result in our SwiftUI layout. We just care about the actual pages come, coming back. And so we're ditching these two and storing just an array of pages. That's what's happening right here. Nothing else, just the array of pages. Now, before we can tackle the actual network request itself, we've got one last fairly easy job to do. Uh, inside our form here, we have uh, to show the current loading state, what we're we currently doing. And you can, you can do this with a new section, with the title of your choosing, and then either a bunch of if and else ifs or a switch case. So we'll say in here, there's a new section. I'll give this a title of nearby. And inside there, we'll do a switch on our loading state. And Xcode will complete for me the enum with all three of its cases. If we're currently loading, easy. We'll say the current text says loading. If we've failed, easy enough again. Text, uh, please try again later. 
If we've loaded though, that means we have our Wikipedia data back. It's time to show it somehow onto the screen. So here we'll say there is a for each over our pages array. The identifier will be backslash dot page ID. It's unique, remember. Give me one page coming in. And inside here we'll do the text page title. Show that inside our uh, layout, each page's title. And we'll add this thing has a nice headline font, a bit bolder. But a neat little trick here, we can add more text here in different kinds of fonts. We can say plus text colon, like that. So add colon to that. And then add again, let's do uh, page, oops, page description here in an italic font. And they'll get merged together into one single uh, line of text in our layout, which is great. It just combines to one thing. Now, uh, for the part that really brings us all together, we're going to fetch some data from Wikipedia, right? Decode that into our uh, result struct, which contains a query, which contains a page. Assign the pages part, so the queries, pages, blah, pull that out into our pages property, and then set loading state to be loaded. Or if it fails, make it fail instead, and then it'll show a different UI. Now, the URL we're going to load is quite long, and so I've made a little... Uh, uh, shortcut for you it is at uh, bit.ly <laughs> slash swift wiki bit.ly slash swift wiki when you go there it'll redirect you to this gist i have right here with this big old url thing here you want to snag that so let's go to raw and then just select that whole thing here and uh use it in here so copy that to your uh clipboard please and then we'll add a new method down here called fetch nearby places, which will be async. And we're going to paste that on in. And you'll see in here, we've got to pass in a place mark coordinate latitude and a place mark coordinate longitude. Now for us, our place mark is uh, this location, right? And that contains a coordinate. So we can say location coordinate latitude and location coordinate longitude to get that data out. Now it'll give us back our URL string ready to go. We can now make that into a URL. Now, if you remember, URLs are made from strings. But they return optional URLs in case the string you passed in was bad. If you know it's correct. If you've hand typed the URL in Xcode and your Swift code directly, fine, force and wrap it. Here though, we're using string interpolation with a location coordinate, latitude, and longitude. Who knows what's in those? Like I, I don't even try and pretend they'll always be correct because they won't always be correct. We invalid data in there, for example, somehow. And so we'll do this very, very carefully. We'll say, guard let URL is a URL with a string, that URL string. And if that fails, we'll just print out bad URL, URL string. It failed, bail out. In practice, those are doubles. They should always work, but always should. Meaningless words in programming, right? It's not worth taking a risk. If we're still here, the URL's good. So we can say, uh, start a do block. Let data underscore be try await URL session dot shared dot data from that URL. If we're here, it means we've got some data back. We can say let items equals try JSON decoder dot decode result dot self from that data. And if we're still here, it means we decoded a result from there. We can pull that out into our object. So we'll say uh, our pages is going to be items dot query dot pages dot values and then sort that somehow. So I'll say sorted using $0.title is less than $1.title. So sort them alphabetically. And if we're still here, it means all work correctly. We can say loading state equals dot loaded. However, if either of these two things failed, we want to catch those errors down here 
uh, any part of the request failed, doesn't matter what it is, our loading state equals dot failed. Something's gone wrong. And that's our request done. And that needs to start as soon as our new view appears. So up in our, our views up here, we have our toolbar. I'm gonna add to this a new task to await calling fetch nearby places. And now all being well, the app is significantly better. I'll press Command R now, give it a quick try. I'll go uh, over London somewhere interesting, approximately there, and then press plus. And then hopefully in here, let's find out, boom. Lots of places nearby there sorted alphabetically, which is really, really nice. So our edit view now has custom user data, but also finds things dynamically from Wikipedia.